Well done, Steve. Good luck, Cheltenham. That's all from me. Now back to Mary at New Street Station in Birmingham, where we're marking the halfway stage in the largest and most complex construction project in Europe, revamping a tired old railway station. Mary. Yes, thanks very much indeed, Nick. The work is still going on. It's a bit of a construction site here, but some of you may actually remember the old New Street station before its last major redevelopment in the 1960s. But actually, the first station to be built on this site was in the 19th century. And our reporter, Kevin Reed has been talking to two people with some very special memories. Here's a picture taken on Platform 8 that my father took... When Mark the, uh, Norton from Bromsgrove is too young to remember the last time New Street was redeveloped, but he can at least look back thanks to his dad Dennis's work as a keen amateur photographer. One of his passions in life was the railways, and he started taking his first photographs at New Street Station when he was 17 in 1947, and he continued taking those pictures up to his death in 1965, and he was fascinated by the changes that were going on in the 1960s and made a careful record of what was happening at the time. Sadly, though, Mark never knew his dad, as he died aged just 35 from an asthma attack. He died a few weeks before I was born, so it's, it's, it's helped me get to know him as a person in a way. And it's quite moving in, in that respect, but also moving to find out how Birmingham used to be in the old days. In this picture, Dennis captures how daylight used to stream into the old New Street station. That wouldn't happen now because there's just layer upon layer of concrete above us. Someone who remembers the days of daylit platforms is rail enthusiast Peter Hughes. I do recall it in about 1950 onwards when it was a huge domed roof. I think half had been demolished by bombing in the Second World War. There was wonderful road access down the middle, level with the platforms, where you could actually park and just walk onto a train level. And because it was light, the point was it was light and airy. On a tour, he reminded me of the problems with the current station, a distinct lack of escalators, dark and dingy platforms, and an abundance of concrete. But he has higher hopes for the new New Street. It'll be lighter, brighter, and it'll give a much better first impression for the city. This is the important thing. People must get a good impression of Birmingham as soon as they arrive. New Street's been here for more than 150 years. Chances are it will still be here in another 150. Kevin Reed, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. So how are all these changes going to affect commuters? Well, joining me from the passenger group Travel Watch is Phil Davis. Thanks for coming along, Phil. What do you make of what you see? Well, I think people will be really surprised at how spacious the new area is compared to the old station. I mean, we remember how... Uh, how confusing and claustrophobic it was and I, it's really great to see what has happened. Uh, it's quite unbelievable actually if you remember the old station. I think people will welcome it. Yeah, so what were the main problems really with the old station? We call it the old station, it's still going on actually well, just over there. exactly, <laughs> uh, but I mean, the real problem was that sense of being underground. I mean, we won't see the full openness of the new station for a while, but people will just be surprised, as I say, by the sheer amount of space that's been recreated with the old car park having gone and the retail has been spread out. So it, it's like a breath of fresh air really when you come in here and see what they've done. Yeah, it all looks great, doesn't it? But what about from the, the, the reality, for the, from the, the passenger's point of view? What do you want? Because it's all very well mm. looking nice, yes. but you want it to be efficient, don't you? Well, if proof is in the pudding, so, you know, people on Sunday will be able to see how it works for them. And no doubt there'll be some teething problems, but uh, I, I know that people are working hard behind the scenes to tackle that. Uh, one thing would be disabled access, I think, to make sure that, you know, people who have mobility issues can get round. And again, um, all that needs to be teased out, but uh, there are a lot of plans I know in place to make that work for people and again I think the just the general feel of the access will be much better I mean I think there are now 20 uh, escalators rather than six and that's only half the proposed new station so that's got to be very good news for access to the platforms and for the rest of the station and what about the rest of the project for phase two what are you hoping that that's going to achieve well I mean I think we'll see a real transformation there's a very interesting video that I know Network Rail have put together which I've seen which shows you how the whole thing will look in 2015 and I think that will be really impressive because we'll have natural light in the station for the first time we're not there yet but you know it's just the uh, this is a really big step I think on making a big improvement for Birmingham commuters for any traveller who comes to New Street and to Birmingham. Good for 
the railway, good for the city, I think. But I know that we've spoken before about frustrations around services. Mm. Having a brand new shiny station doesn't necessarily make the trains run on time. No, it? that's true. That has to be got right. And we've had these problems with London Midland, which I know they're tackling. But um, it's just the, the, the feel of the station is very important, isn't it? Because people didn't want to linger in the past, did they? And, and really, as an introduction to the city, for people coming into the city from elsewhere, particularly abroad, it was pretty horrible, wasn't it? So now I think we will have uh, something that is much better. And we're not even at the best yet, uh, but I think this will be a great improvement for first-time visitors uh, and for users. OK, Phil Davis from Travel Watch, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Uh, you may just be able to hear the drilling in the background. It is still very much a work in progress, but hopefully come Sunday, if you come here, you'll see a, a huge, huge difference. But the main thing is, how does it all work? If you're a commuter, this is what you need to know. All the existing entrances to New Street Station will close on Sunday. The main vehicle and pedestrian entrance on Smallbrook Queensway will be shut, as will the Victoria Square exit on Navigation Street. And the existing escalators from the Palisade Shopping Centre down onto the station concourse will no longer be in use. So, from Sunday, if you're coming to New Street by car to drop someone off or pick them up, you'll need to use the new vehicle entrance on Hill Street, which is just off Smallbrook, Queensway. Pedestrians can use the Hill Street entrance too. It gives you direct access to the new station concourse. Another way in on foot will be at Stevenson Street, just around the corner from the old Navigation Street exit. And there'll be new escalators in and out of the Palisades shopping centre. I actually came through some hail on my way into Birmingham today. Let's find out what the weather has in store over the weekend. Rebecca Wood has the forecast for us. Rebecca. Well, we've got a bit of a changing picture to the weather over the weekend. Definitely a colder feel in the air, and that's the way it's going to continue over the next few days, at least. We will see some spells of sunshine tomorrow, but a warning for all the gardeners out there, we've got the return of some overnight frosts over this weekend, so some cold conditions to come. There's been some cloud about today, enough to squeeze out the odd shower here and there. Some of them have been quite heavy and we've also seen some hail as well. Over the next few hours we'll continue with those showers. Some of them could still be quite heavy but they will start to fizzle out and once they've moved off it's going to be a largely dry end to the day with some clearing skies. Now in those clearing skies temperatures are going to fall away quite rapidly and we're going to see an overnight low of between two and four degrees, much colder than we've seen recently. Possibility of a touch of frost here and there. So quite a chill start to our Saturday but it won't be too bad through the morning some bright spells even some sunshine but we have got showers starting to build and make their way right the way through the region during the morning they're going to be much lighter than the ones that we've seen today and they won't be sticking around for too long but we've also got a change in the wind direction the winds are going to be coming from the north again temperatures between 10 and 11 celsius in the sunshine it might feel a little bit more pleasant it's an improving picture through Saturday afternoon with more spells of sunshine to end the day for most places is the odd shower here and there but as we get through the night the skies clear once again and temperatures will once again tumble away and it's going to be a colder night because we've got lighter winds getting down to between two and four again in towns and cities but in rural spots much colder possibly even getting into minus figures and the further southeast you are the longer it's going to be staying clear so much more chance of some frost forming overnight there sunday is looking like quite a depressing dismal day really dull and damp with lots of cloud about and some rain as well and underneath the cloud temperatures are really going to struggle we're looking at a top temperature of about 8 celsius which isn't really what we want to be seeing at this time of year and as we make our way through to the start of the new working week staying unsettled but by tuesday is starting to be an improving picture OK, Rebecca, Rebecca, thanks very much indeed. Well, our transport correspondent, Peter Plisner, is back with me. Peter, how important is this project to the redevelopment to the city and, in fact, the whole of the region? Well, vitally important because it's the major gateway for the region. It'll also help uh, regeneration of some parts of Birmingham, maybe many parts of Birmingham. Certainly the south side is already being redeveloped because we're seeing the John Lewis building going up there. Certainly we're expecting the regeneration to spread further south in the city centre as well. And of course we've got other developments around the region. The Midland Metro is coming in just uh, outside the new station. We've got the new airport uh, extension to the runway. Uh, we've also got uh, a lot of uh, investment on the motorways as well. So a lot is happening in this region. It's also about the Birmingham's image 
in a wider sense outside just the Midlands, isn't it? Indeed, Birmingham has struggled to have a decent image as uh, the UK's second city. City leaders are certainly hoping that this development being a you know, rival point will make a big difference, but they're, they're hoping that uh, Birmingham will be able to punch its weight on the international stage and as a result, hopefully get more investment in. And we are seeing higher levels of inward investment, but we obviously do need more. And of course, uh, you know, that's vital for any city. And uh, you just have to look at how many cranes are up and uh, you see how it's developing. OK, thanks very much indeed, Peter. And on the note of the drilling, let's hope everything's up and running from Sunday, but from all of us here on Midlands today, a very good evening. Bye-bye.